Fundamentals of Nursing Highlines, Ethics in Nursing, Role and Responsibilities of a Nurse. This exam tackles the significance of the fundamental needs of humans and competence in fundamental skills as prerequisites signs for providing extensive nursing care. Take this 185 questions NCLEX style exam and saw high your actual NCLEX. Question 1. The most important nursing intervention to correct skin dryness is A. Avoid bathing the patient until the condition is remedied and notify the physician. B. Ask the physician to refer the patient to a dermatologist and suggest that the patient wear home laundered sleepwear. C. Consult the dietitian about increasing the patient's fat intake and take necessary measures to prevent infection. D. Encourage the patient to increase his fluid intake, use non-irritating soap when bathing the patient, and apply lotion to the involved areas. Answer D. Explanation. Dry skin will eventually crack, ranking the patient more prone to infection. To prevent this, the nurse should provide adequate hydration through fluid intake, use non-irritating soaps or no soap when bathing the patient, and lubricate the patient's skin with lotion. Bathing may be limited but needs not to be avoided entirely. The attending physician and dietitian may be consulted for treatment, but home laundered items usually are not necessary. Question 2. When bathing a patient's extremities, the nurse should use long foam strokes from the distal to the proximal areas. This technique A. provides an opportunity for skin assessment. B. avoids undue strain on the nurse. C. increases venous blood return. D. causes vasoconstriction and increases circulation. Answer C. Explanation. Washing from distal to proximal areas stimulates venous blood flow, thereby preventing venous stasis. It improves circulation but does not result in vasoconstriction. The nurse can assess the patient's condition throughout the bath, regardless of washing technique and should feel no strain while bathing the patient. Question 3. Vivid dreaming occurs in which date of sleep? A. Stage 1 non-REM B. Rapid eye movement REM state C. Stage 2 non-REM D. Delta stage Answer B. Explanation. Other characteristics of rapid eye movement, REM, sleep a deep sleep, the patient cannot be awakened easily, depressed muscle tone, and possibly irregular heart and respiratory rates. Non-REM sleep is a deep restful sleep without dreaming. Delta stage or slow wave sleep occurs during non-REM stages 3 and 4 and is often adequated with quiet sleep. Question 4. The natural sedative in meat and milk products, especially warm milk, that can help induce sleep is A. Fluorazepam C. Tryptophan D. Methotrimepressin Answer C. Explanation. Tryptophan is the natural sedative fluorazepam domain, tamazepam resveril, and methotrimaparazine levoprome are hypnotic sedatives. Question 5. Nursing interventions that can help the patient relax and sleep restfully include all of the following except A. Have the patient take a 30 to 60 minute nap in the afternoon B. Turn on the television in the patient's room C. Provide quiet music and interesting reading material D. Message the patient's back with long strokes
Answer A. Explanation. Napping in the afternoon is not conductive to nighttime sleeping. Quiet music, watching television, reading, and massage usually will relax the patient, helping him to fall asleep. Question six: Restraints can be used for all of the following purposes, except two. A. Prevent a confused patient from removing tubes such as feeding tubes, IV lines, and urinary catheters. B. Prevent a patient from falling out of bed or chair. C. Discourage a patient from attempting to ambulate alone when he requires assistance to his safety. D. Prevent a patient from becoming confused or disoriented. Answer D. Explanation. By restricting a patient's movements, restraints may increase stress and lead to confusion rather than prevent it. The other choices are valid reasons for using restraints. Question seven: Which of the following is the nurse's legal responsibility when applying restraints? A. Document the patient's behavior. B. Document the type of restraint used. C. Obtain a written order from the physician, except in an emergency, when the patient must be protected from injury to himself or others. D. Of the above. Answer D. Explanation. When applying restraints, the nurse must document the type of behavior that prompted her to use them, document the type of restraints used, and obtain a physician's written order for the restraints. Question eight. Coupler Ross five successive stages of death and dying are: A. Anger. Bargaining, denial, depression, acceptance. B. Denial, anger, depression, bargaining, acceptance. C. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. D. Bargaining, denial, anger, depression, acceptance. Answer C. Explanation. Coupler rows five successive stages of death and dying are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. The patient may move back and forth through the different stages as he and his family members react to the process of dying, but he usually goes through all of these stages to reach acceptance. Question nine: A terminally ill patient usually experiences all of the following feelings during the anger stage, except a rage, b envy, c numbness, d resentment. Answer C. Explanation. Numbness is typical of the depression stage when the patient feels a great sense of loss. The anger stage includes such feelings as rage, envy, resentment, and the patient's questioning, "Why me?" Question ten: Nurses and other healthcare providers often have difficulty helping a terminally ill patient through the necessary stages leading to acceptance of death. Which of the following strategies is most helpful to the nurse in achieving this goal? A. Taking psychology courses related to gerontology. B. Reading books and other literature on the subject of thanatology. C. Reflecting on the significance of death. D. Reviewing varying cultural beliefs and practices related to death. Answer C. Explanation. According to thanatologist, reflecting on the significance of death helps to reduce the fear of death and enables the healthcare provider to better understand the terminally ill patient's feelings. It also helps to overcome the belief that medical and nursing measures have failed when a patient cannot be cured. Thank you for watching.